Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Tal. Thank you for coming. In this talk, I'm going to give an overview of our recent paper, Soft Intro VAE, Analyzing and Improving the Introspective Variation of the Encoder, which will be presented at this year's CVPR. You are more than welcome to visit our project site, which includes more results linked to the open source code and linked to the paper. Before we begin, I want to give some motivation why we want better likelihood based models. And more specifically, why building stronger variational autoencoders, which are one type of this family of models, is desired. Likelihood based models allow us to learn useful, possibly compact representations of the data. These representations can be used for many other downstream tasks. For example, decision making under uncertainty, which is important in the field of machine, learn machine learning, as the world is not deterministic. And as this field is mostly data driven, we don't want our models to be too confident in their decisions. In addition, learning the distribution of the data or an approximation of the distribution provides us with tools such as generating, generate, generating new data or detecting out of distribution and samples. The work I'm going to present today is focused on improving variational autoencoders or VAEs in short. So variational autoencoders or VAEs are models that belong to the explicit density generative models family. VAEs try to approximate, uh, to approximate the density of the data by maximizing the evidence store bound or the elbow in short. The elbow can be broken into the reconstruction error, just like in regular autoencoders, and the KL divergence between an auxiliary distribution Q and some simple prior P. Now, if we take a look at, <coughs> at how uh, VAs are implemented, you can see that the only difference between autoencoders and variational autoencoders is the output of the encoder. Instead of outputting a deterministic latent code, it is outputting a, a distribution of latent codes. And this is why it is called a variational autoencoder. So why VAs, VAs are so important? Because you can find them everywhere. And I'm sure you can find an applications of, uh, of VA, or application of VA that is relevant to your field. There are two widely popular approaches for learning deep generative models. One is generative adversarial training, for example, generative adversarial networks or GANs. And the second one is variational inference, for example, variational autoencoders or VAs. VAs are known to have a stable training procedure, display resilience to mode collapse and enable amortized inference. GANs on the other end, they lack an inference model but they are capable of generating images of higher quality and are popular in computer vision tasks. But as you know, they can suffer from training instability and low sampling diversity, which is also known as mode collapse. Now, if we take a look at the images that VAEs generate, we can see that they are pretty blurry and nowhere near the quality of guns. So let's try to explain why this blurriness happens and how we can rectify it. It is clear and quite known that VAEs struggle with generation. Let's try to understand what the VAE learns. So for a simple 2D data set, the eight Gaussians data set, you can see that the VAE learns to generate samples from the modes, from the eight modes, but also between the modes and in the center here. Now this is a weird observation, right? Because these, these samples have, have never been seen before by the VAE. Now for images, this is interpreted as the blurriness since the pixels are somewhere between the range of the true pixel distribution. If we take a look at the likelihood estimation experiment, you can see that the VAE assigns most of the probability mass in the center, in the mean of the modes. One explanation for this is that since VAEs maximize the lower bound of the data likelihood, the elbow, and not the actual likelihood, there is no guarantee that points outside the support of P data effects will not be assigned high likelihood. So the VAE essentially doesn't care what happens outside the support of the data likelihood. So how can we tell the VAE what are bad samples? One way to do it would be similar to GAN, right? Let's add a discriminator and use its signal to propagate to the VAE what are real and what are fake samples. Another way, is using an introspective approach, which is the focus of this work. And this means that, we, that the method does not require an additional discriminator in the VAE framework. Introspective means look inside yourself, examine yourself for self-analysis. In the VAE, we already have a generative model, the decoder. We now assign the original encoder the role of discriminating between real and generated data. Recall that in the original VA, we optimize the elbow. And one of the components of the elbow is the KL divergence between the statistics of real data and some prior. So actually, we already have one part of the discrimination because we constrain the real data to look in a certain way. In that sense, out of distribution data should be far away from the prior because we don't constrain to, constrain to be closer to the prior during training. But as we just saw, VAs can actually assign high likelihood to out of distribution data. So to make it like a GAN, we need, we need to explicitly tell the encoder to push away fake data from the prior. How can we do that? Remember that we still want to maintain the properties of the original VA. So the elbow of real samples should still be present for both models. For the encoder, we assign it the role of the discriminator. So we need some function to push away fake data from the prior. For the decoder, it acts as generator. So fake data should be shaped to fool the encoder. Now, what does fooling mean in the variational setting? 
It means bringing the statistics of fake data as interpreted by the encoder closer to, to the prior statistics. What are reasonable choices for pulling away and pulling cluster function? This brings us to the original introspective VA or intro VA. In, it, in the introspective VA or intro VA, the K L term in the elbow is seen as the energy of a sample. Intro VA maximizes the following objectives. Inspired by energy-based GAN or EBGAN, the encoder is encouraged to classify between the real and generated samples by minimizing the KL of real samples using the standard elbow and maximizing the KL of generated ones using this hard margin here with hyperparameter M, and this is inspired by, by EBGAN. Now, note that there is no need for a discriminator here because the encoder is responsible for the discrimination. The decoder, on the other hand, is trained to reconstruct real data samples using the standard elbow and to minimize the KL of generated samples that go through the encoder. Now, in practice, intro VA is known in the community to be unstable and very hard to train, though it reports really nice results on images. We now introduce soft intro VA, a new introspective VA model that mitigates the shortcomings of intro VA, mainly the training instability due to the hard threshold function and the fact that the full optimization objective lacks theoretical justification. Soft intro VA maximizes the following objectives. Note that unlike uh, intro VA, there is no longer a hard margin threshold in the encoder and no need for the M hyperparameter. And we utilize the complete elbow term and not just the KL term for the uh, real and fake data. This is important for the, for the theoretical analysis. So basically what you're seeing here is a game between the encoder and decoder. The encoder is induced to distinguish through the elbow value between real and generated samples, and the decoder is induced to generate samples that fool the encoder. We have developed and proved the theory behind the introspective approach and the proposed game, which can be found in the paper, but I want to emphasize two important results. First, for the encoder, the first part of the proof showed that even though we mix the variational setting with an adversarial setting, we still get conversion to the, to the optimal posterior. This important conclusion does not appear in the analysis of the original intro VA. For the decoder, we show that the optimal decoder satisfies the following, and we get convergence to the, da to the entropy regularized data distribution. Finally, our theorem states that Q star and D star, as mentioned here, are an equilibrium of the, of the proposed game. Now, interestingly, the theorem shows that soft intro VA does not converge to the data distribution, like in GANs, but to an entropy regularized version of it. Now, one should question the effects uh, of such a polarization in light of the typical goal of generating samples that, that are similar to the data distribution. And the experiments, the experiments we perform, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, on various data sets illustrate that soft intro VA learns distribution with sharper supports than the standard VA, but without the negative effects such as mode dropping. There are two key differences between soft intro VA and intro VA. First, we utilize the complete elbow term instead of just the KL, KL term. And this allows us to provide a complete variation on inference-based analysis. Secondly, the soft exponential function is much easier to optimize and results in improved training stability. Implementing soft intro VA is quite simple. You can take your original VA with the same architecture and optimize the elbow of real data for both models as you would do in regular VA. And then you add the adversarial terms, the exponential elbow of fake data for the encoder and the elbow of fake data for the decoder. First, we wanted to understand what kind of distribution our model learns. So we looked at 2D data, which is easy to visualize. So here, here's an example. We can see that the introspective models generate much less samples, much, generate much less out of distribution data. And this is true for other data sets as well. And you can see that soft intro VAE learns distribution with sharper supports, which illustrate the effect of the entropy regularization. Mm -hmm. We also verify our results quantitatively with three metrics to evaluate inference and sampling. And as we report in the paper, soft intro VA outperforms intro VA both quantitatively and qualitatively, and both are superior to the standard VA. We also investigated the source of the, uh, of the original intro VA instability and found that the M hyperparameter in the R margin is highly sensitive to its values. And even small deviations from the optimal values led to divergence. The, slight, the straight line you see here is soft intro VA, which does not require the, uh, the M hyperparameter. For image generation, we evaluated, we evaluated it in terms of, of both inference, that means reconstruction of unseen data, and sampling, which means generation of new data. For the smaller resolution data sets, uh, CIFAR-10 and SVHN, we use the standard CNN architecture for the encoder and decoder. Note that the ability to reconstruct real data is related to the inference model of the VAE, something which is not explicitly possible in GANs. 
For the higher resolution datasets, Celebe HQ, FFHU, and Elson bedrooms, we used a style-based architecture. Our model further narrows the, the sampling quality gap in terms of FID to GANs and outperforms all other autoencoding methods. Here you can see results on FFHU and results on Elson bedrooms can be found in the paper. One of the desirable uh, properties of VAEs is the continuous learned latent space. Basically, you can take two images, encode them, and perform smooth interpolation in the latent space between them, which is exactly what you are seeing right here. We also evaluated our model on the task of unsupervised image translation. So basically, for the CAR 3D dataset, for example, you want to transfer the content from the images in the top row to the images in the left column. And this means rotating, rotating the cars uh, without altering their color and class. Now, unlike previous methods that use some kind of supervision signal, our method does not require such signals and narrow the gap to the supervised state of the art approach on the CAR 3D dataset. We also demonstrate qualitative results on the KTH dataset. We, have, we perform additional experiments like out of distribution detection and 3D point cloud generation, uh, which can be found on the project, project set and in the paper. And you are more than welcome to take a look. To sum up, Introspective training narrows the sampling quality gap between VAs and GANs. It enjoys the favorable trait of variational inference models such as amortized inference. Our model, soft intro VA, is more stable to train and simpler to analyze than, than intro VA. It provides new insights on the introspective training and demonstrates competitive results on various tasks. And what does the future hold? So introspective models open the door for using high quality generative models in applications that also require first and high quality inference. We have pre-trained models and step-by-step -step Jupyter Notebook tutorials on our, on our, on our GitHub. One, uh, one last thing, uh, I just wanted to share with you that we make our material for the courses I teach over the Technion available to everyone and you are more than welcome to check out the Jupyter Notebooks which include a lot of math and code over at GitHub. And before we go, to end on a positive note, here is a fun experiment. Let's, uh, let's, let's generate new Pokemons based on a difficult and diverse uh, data set of digital monsters. We have really nice results on generating new Pokemons, uh, and we hope this does not give you any nightmares, but please don't show this to your kids. Thank you.